if we are managing a multi-area OFPF topology and we have a large number of networks, the link state database and routing table can get a huge amount of entries and that is going to impact the overall performance of the OFPF process. When designing the networks, we need to think about route summarization. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use area range to reduce the number of routes in the routing tables in your multi-area OFPF topology. Welcome to the network trip. Area range is a feature in OFPF that allows to consolidate, to summarize routes for an area. So instead of sending individual announcements per subnet, area range can summarize and then advertise just one single route instead of announcing dozens of smaller networks. For example, let's assume that we have one area and inside that area, we are managing those networks. 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Then we have 10.20.30 slash 24. Instead of sending four routes, we can summarize all of them and we can advertise just a single route. The only limitation is that the area must have at least one OFPF route from the specified area falling under it. For example, if we are going to announce that supernet, at least that area must have one network that is inside that supernet. I'm going to use the same topology that I used in one of the previous videos here in the channel, where we went through the configuration process for a multi-area OFPF network. Initially, let's go with the typical configuration without using area ranges. So I will go to area one and I'm going to create four VLAN interfaces and I will assign to every VLAN interface an IP from those networks. And since we have OFPF running in this topology, the ABR that guy there that is connected to the backbone and also to the area one is going to advertise those routes into the backbone and then the backbone is going to inject those routes into the remaining areas. In this case, additionally to the backbone and area one, we only have area two. After checking the large amount of routes that all those routers will get from the area one, then we'll apply the area range and we'll see how we can reduce the size of the routing tables. It's important to mention that area range is going to summarize only OFPF routes. If, for example, we have a connection to an external routing domain and we are injecting external routes, area range is not going to work over those routes. We'll use a different approach that will cover in one of the upcoming videos here in the channel. So let's go now to R4. Let's create those interfaces and add an IP to them. So I'm going to interfaces and then VLAN. And let's start by adding VLAN2. VLAN ID is going to be 2. And we'll add that one. And this is going to be over the interface Ether2. Then we can add a new one. In this case, VLAN3. ID is going to be 3 over Ether2 as well. Then we can apply and simply copy the same entry here, VLAN 4, and then we'll have VLAN 5. So the idea is just to have those virtual interfaces and then assign an IP on them. P addresses, and then we'll add a new entry. So the first one is going to be 192.168.2.1. So we'll use the first IP of the network. And we'll assign that to the VLAN interface. So the next one is going to be 3. That is for VLAN 3. Then 4.1. That is over VLAN 4. And then we'll have 5.1 on VLAN 5. So we have those four networks. Additionally, 
192.168.1.1 that is directly on the interface ether2. So now OFPF needs to look for those networks. Currently there is an interface template on ether2 so I can just add those interfaces there. So I'm going to routing OFPF interface template. All this configuration that I have now is coming from the previous video here in the channel. If you don't know how to configure the multi-area OFPF topology, please check the video above and then you can return to this video and you can continue from that point. So now here we are on interface templates. I will edit the entry for iter2 and I will just include the VLANs that we have just created. VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 4 and VLAN 5 and we can click OK. Now the OFPF process in R4 is going to look for those interfaces and you can see that has found the IP address configured there and also it's going to be advertising those networks to R2. And then R2 that is the ABR, the area border router is going to inject those routes into the backbone and then the backbone will send that information to the area 2. If I go to R5 that is connected on the right here on area 2 and we check the routing table, IP, routes, we can see that we have that bunch of networks. All of them were originated inside the area 1. So we can see 5 routes, but just imagine we can have areas that can have dozens or hundreds of networks and then we can have a pretty large list of subnets. So instead of having all that amount, then we can simply summarize those subnets. We can look for a supernet and then instead of advertising five individual routes, we can advertise just one. A critical point to be successful with this process of route summarization is to have contiguous networks inside every area. Like in this case, you can see that all those networks are adjacent with just one after the other. And now we can simply aggregate all of them and we can inject a single route. We can do this just by going with the binary calculation or we can simply use a calculator. Let's go first with the binary calculation. So how we are going to determine what the supernet. So let's go to the whiteboard. Those are the five networks inside area one. So first of all, we need to check which octets are common to all the networks. And we can easily determine that those two groups have exactly the same value for all the networks. And we can see that those values are changing in the third octet and then the last one has exactly the same value because we are using it's like 24 so we have 24 bits for the network portion so that means that the change is going in the octet number three now we can simply convert those numbers to binary if you are not familiar with this process from going from decimal to binary I will post several videos that will be explaining this process and then you will be able to easily go from a decimal to binary. At this point, I just assuming that you know how to go from decimal to binary. Once we have those values in binary, then we can start checking all the bits that are common to all those numbers. We can conclude that the first five bits in every number are zeros. That means that those networks are sharing five bits plus 16 that we have in the first two octets. That means that we are going to have slash 21. So the supernet for those networks is going to be 192.168.0.0 slash 21. This is the process if we need to manually determine the supernet that we can advertise instead of that large number of subnets. 
If we don't wish to invest time going through this manual process, we can simply use an online tool where basically we can simply type all the subnets separated by a comma and this is going to calculate the supernet for us. So I'm just going to add all the supernets inside area one. So we have all those subnets and we can simply click calculate. This is going to tell me your supernet is 192.168.0.0/21. That is the route that is aggregating all those subnets. So instead of sending five routes, we can send just one. So how are we going to create the area range? That is going to be on the routing and then OFPF. And then inside there, we'll find the area range tab. We need to provide some information such as the area, then the prefix that basically going to be the supernet, then the cost. So that is going to be the cost that will be attached to that network. If we don't provide that value, OFPF is going to take the largest cost from all those networks that now have been aggregated into the supernet. So let's go back to our topology and let's add this area range. We must configure the area ranges in the ABR. So in this case, R2 is the router that is going to take all those smaller subnets and it's going to advertise just a single aggregated route. It's important to know that inside the OFPF area, it still will see all those smaller networks because we still need to know how to reach every individual network. But outside the area, just the supernet is the one that is going to be visible. Let's go to R2 and configure the area range. Routing, OFPF, and then we'll go to area ranges. And I'm going to add a new entry. The area is area one. Prefix, this is the supernet that we have calculated. So that is going to be 192.168.0.0 slash 21. Then the cost, I won't provide that value. So FPF is going to pick the largest cost of all the individual subnets. And then we'll select this option advertise. This is basically telling, please aggregate all those smaller subnets and advertise just the supernet. If I click OK now and I go to R5, then in just a few seconds, I will see that these routes will disappear. So you can see they are gone. So instead of having those five routes, R5 has only one. And that route is pointing to the network 192.168.00.21. But still, if I go to R5 and I send a pin to any of the IP addresses in area one, it's able to reach that IP. Because inside the area, these routers will have all the individual subnets. If I check routes, this is R2, you can see that we have five routes. But if I go to R1 that is in the backbone area, IP routes, we can see only the supernet. So the backbone area is just getting the supernet. And now just in my having dozen of those routes and instead of sending that large number of advertisements, we're just sending one advertisement. This is going to reduce the link state database. And as a result, the OFPF process will perform better. I hope this video has been informative for you and I see you in the next one.